did bring some swag uh, from Mississippi. We've got a store called Dirt Cheap. So anytime you uh, turn something into Target or um, Macy's or whatever else, and no one wants it, it shows up in Mississippi and I usually buy it. All right? Uh, it's a little bit of bling, superhero stuff. Take one, I guess, probably one for each person. I didn't realize that I'd have such a, a packed crowd. Um, don't ask me what app I did to use to do that avatar. I did that like four years ago on Facebook. I could probably find it, but I guess I was super gangster is what I was trying to uh, accomplish, okay? Uh, I usually waste time in class, or sometimes my students think that, uh, because for me, the very first five minutes of class, that is their time, okay? I don't start my lecture, I don't quiz them, I don't, I don't really do anything that they don't wanna do. You know, if someone has a crazy cat video, we'll see it, okay, because that's their time. That is my way of connecting with them. If there's a problem, especially if we're doing things online, that's their forum. And uh, for me, it's sort of like face-to-face -face piazza. It's like the FAQ that you can just go back and forth. But um, I always like telling jokes. So um, I am going to tell you an art joke that I made up on the fly, and I was the only one that laughed. So maybe some of you will get it, OK? Everyone knows what stereography is, right? It's soap screening, right? What did the ink say to the stereographer? This is a fine mesh you've got me into. <laughs> Get it? Fine mesh. I had to explain it about, you know, 20 minutes into class, down the back row, he starts laughing. Okay? <laughs> uh, and that's sort of how I feel today. It is a, a fine mesh I've gotten myself into because in order to show you what I want to show you, uh, I'm not able to use preservatives. So what I am doing is totally off the cuff, it's off the fly, and I hope I remember everything that I have uh, put into this. Uh, at about 11.30 last night, after hack night, I revamped about 40% uh, of my presentation uh, because I learned something and it did it in a way that I wanted to do it in the first place. So I'm not gonna show you my old way, I'm gonna show you my new way. And uh, I don't know about you, but I, I'm constantly changing at the wheel, but I love every second of it. Okay? Uh, what is your superpower? Okay? Uh, I've often thought about that a lot. Uh, this is me as a kid. Anybody recognize who I am? Or which one's me? I'm sporting the red converse in the middle. Okay, the awkward fourth grader that I am. Any idea where I am? Graceland. I, I was going to show you this. Okay? Because when I was that age, I thought I could run faster than anyone. Okay? And whatever you do, don't mess with me in Taekwondo, all right? Uh, this is uh, my stint in Korea. Uh, they gave us this outfit and it had my name on the back. It was really kind of awkward. And uh, I did touch it, okay? If you were here last year, you probably did that. Uh, and that's what I told him when I saw him. And it was too legit to quit. And I said that to my students when I got back and they're like, what are you talking about? Yet again, another concept that they don't get. Uh, I try to be genuine with my students. Uh, I try to be as crazy and as silly as I possibly can be, um, because what we're about is creating memories. We're a non-residential community college, so people are coming in, they don't have that experience that I had when I went to a four-year, and I was hanging out with older people, okay? Well, the first time that I met my wife and I had the four-hour conversation, I go back to the dorm room and I say, I found the girl I want to marry, and I did. Okay, it took her a while to come around, but she did. Uh, it took her three times. I asked her, and she's like, I can't do this. But the first time I told her I loved her, she said, what do you want me to say? And I uh, said, so, uh, maybe I love you. But we were best friends, and we're still best friends. And if she were to walk in that door right now, my heart would skip a beat. Um, so I, I wish that for all of you. So even in my class, I try to you know, convey who I am, because your life should be an open book with your students. I'm trying to share everything I can. I'm very passionate about art. I'm very passionate about Italian. I want to share that passion. And I don't care if you're passionate about building or underwater, underwater basket weaving. Whatever it is, I mean, you got to fly, fly, fly high. And I'm help you fly. Uh, but I do teach at East Mississippi Community College. I'm not a native of Mississippi. I know we've got some Mississippi natives in this audience. Uh, I moved to... Uh, start from Mississippi in order to complete my master's from Florence, Italy. So, the cradle of the Renaissance to the armpit of America. Uh, <laughs> but it has grown on me. Oh, God, I love you. Yeah. Hi, Kyle Bell, I'm 
Yeah. Uh, you might have heard about us, our football team that I follow sports. Uh, we have won the national championship for community college for the two times out of the past three years. Okay. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, since I've been at ENCC, I have piled up more and more work on myself. Uh, I now direct the honors program. Uh, we didn't have an honors program, and so I thought, well, we need an honors program. And of course, you know, the admin's like, you're going to do it for free? We do it. Okay? <laughs> but finally, they got us medals, and this graduation that we just had was the very first time that we had our honors graduates go through. Okay? And uh, I'm head of the art department. Um, I do a lot of things. I teach in four disciplines. So it's uh, pretty crazy. Okay? But if I had a superpower, what I think that I do with my students, it's exposure. Okay? Not exposure in how uh, one Italian, when I told him I was moving back to America, he said, why are you moving back to America? And I said, well, I want to get a master's. He said, is that really the reason? I said, I want another baby. And he said, well, you can have babies in Italy. I'm like, yeah, no, I've had two here. Okay, and the last one, you treated my wife like a dog. She didn't get an aspirin. <laughs> uh, you know, if you want to know about socialized medicine, it's the pits. Okay? Uh, but the student said, what do you need other kids for? You already have two. And my kids are like two years apart. And I don't really have a good Latin accent, but he said, who are you in seminary for? Uh, that's not my job title, so uh, I don't know if that could be a superhero. I didn't want to put that in a presentation, but I just thought about it. <laughs> so, uh, all because I said exposure, but not exposure in that sense, okay? You'll probably see that later in my costume for tonight. Uh, exposing <laughs> students, I have a long talk. Exposing students to things that they're not accustomed to, okay? A lot of times we think our students, uh, I never say my students are stupid, I never say my students are dumb, I never say my students just don't get it. They haven't been exposed to the things that I've been exposed to. You know, I went to Graceland when I was in the fourth grade. By the time I was 19, I traveled in 19 different nations. Okay? There are some people that have never even been out of the county that are community colleges in. Okay? Um, this was a, a small art appreciation class that I had, and I treat all of my classes the same. So all the online homework that they have on my online class, you take me face to face, you get the same thing. Okay? Uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, but we have, instead of online museum visits, I take them to the actual museum. And this is our small group, we only took the, the, the car two and a half hours down uh, to the Mississippi Museum of Art. And the next day the girl's sitting and smiling, and I'm like, why are you so giddy? It's been her five minutes, and she said, I, I saw Bingo. And she said, I haven't stopped smiling since yesterday. Okay? You know, I, I've even been to the Bingo Museum in, in Amsterdam, so it's we don't realize how our students don't get exposure to things. Uh, I took, um, this is a trip that we took to Atlanta to see Vermeer's Girl with the Pearl Earring. We got to the Carlos Museum at Emory, and they had all these mummies. And a girl comes up to me, and she said, is these mummies real? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? It's not a wax museum. And I said, those are decomposing human remains she thought it was all made up on in the movies, okay? We went to uh, Hindu Mandir. This is not India. This is actually in Melbourne, Georgia. And uh, my students were able to almost go to another country without leaving the country that uh, we're in. So uh, even when I'm thinking about flipping the classroom, it's about giving them exposure, giving them a voice, because most of them don't have a voice at home, okay? They just kind of exist. And when they come in to the community college system, they don't really have a direction, okay? Uh, I don't want to do all the talking, all right? Because I'm not an expert, all right? Can someone tell me what the flipped classroom is or what it does? Yeah? Take a traditional classroom where typically there's a lecture and then the students go home and practice or whatever. Okay. Um, and it flips that and we do the practice in class after the students have gone home. you guys think your students are actually going home and putting two or three hours for every hour lecture? Okay, no one's raising their hand. Okay, I'm not the only one. Okay, so what I'm trying to do is to prepare or at least give them some direction for that outside learning so that when we have that 
one-on-one -on -one face time, uh, we're able to communicate, I'm able to understand uh, some of those discrepancies. Uh, because in my case, we have a lot of people that don't even take ACT. And I'm trying to level the playing field so that they can score just as high as, you know, the guy that's driving his Corvette or whatever, okay? So it is a complete uh, paradigm shift when we are thinking. In the traditional classroom, it is teacher-centric. Look at me, look at me. I mean, I, I like attention. I don't like this much attention or this much many people staring at me. I kept hoping, what's after lunch? Maybe not, a lot of people won't come. Because uh, I do get nervous in front of things. So uh, if I'm talking fast, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get through uh, everything, OK? Uh, I am a southerner, but I don't talk slow. Uh, the flipped classroom, the teacher's role is different. The teacher's a coach. The teacher is, um, you know, if I can fade into the background and I see them like having a good old time, I'm pretty happy, okay? Because if they're enjoying being in a classroom, they might just learn, okay? It's not up to me. But when we are thinking about this model, it's just, it's very uh, circular. So educational technology influences learning environment. It then uh, influences uh, everything else. Um, if you're wondering where I got this graph, I will post uh, all of my resources. I just, anything I found was cool, I put it in uh, my keynote. I had about 170 slides, and then I started cutting uh, out. And then I was like, oh, let's make a comic thing. So I spent about five hours developing my own uh, comic thing. But there are four pillars when we are thinking about uh, the flipped classroom. For those of you that don't know what that is, some people call it blended learning, some people call it hybrid learning. Uh, I talked to one guy from Washington last night, he called it on the rocks. Uh, I guess blended, I don't know, shaken, not stirred. Uh, it has to be a flexible environment. If you're not a person that cannot be flexible, I don't know if it's for you, okay? Because you need to expect pandemonium, okay? And it is going to get crazy. In fact, I love this quote. Uh, it, in fact, this uh, was from a review of flipped learning uh, published by George Mason University and the Pearson Center for Educator Effectiveness. Pretty cool. It says teachers must expect that class time will be somehow chaotic and noisy and that uh, timelines and expectations for learning assessments will have to be flexible as well. Okay? So if you can accomplish everything that you're trying to accomplish that day, big deal. Okay, I'll tell you a hint that I do. My very last day of class is makeup exam day. I never use it as a makeup exam day. It's always an extra day to take care of things that I didn't have time for. Okay. Uh, in fact, this is from a Harvard University professor, Eric Manser. He said, if you step into one of my classrooms, you'll think I'm, I was teaching kindergarten class, not a physics class. Uh, not because the students are children, but because of the chaos and how oblivious the students are in my presence. How awesome is that? They don't even know if I'm in the room. And that sometimes happens. Okay? And they'll say something and they're like, oh, Mr. Bain, I didn't mean to say that. I'm like, I don't care. You know, if you're, you're at least participating. There has to be a shift in culture. And you are going to meet resistance because students don't want to do everything you're going to require them to do. Okay? And you're not want, I mean, it's more work for everyone. Okay? I don't know if people tell you that, but it's more work for me, it's more work for them, but in the end, more learning is happening, and uh, at least with retention, we're seeing that more students are actually staying in classes. Okay? And again, it's what I said before, students become the center, and, uh, and we want meaningful learning. All right? There needs to be intentional content. I'm not throwing crap in there just to fill time, okay? to fill airspace. If for some reason it's not meaningful, take it out of the equation. Okay, because for me, it would be better to spend five more minutes and let them come to their own conclusions. Okay, um, probably space learning, active learning, peer-to-peer -peer instruction, whatever you want to call it, uh, then for me to just put filler in. Okay, so very, very intentional. Is flip learning new? No. Okay, anyone ever heard of Socrates? Okay, did he say, well, I'll put a lecture on something when I ask you questions? No. Do you go to, anyone here been to law school? Now, well, if you go to law school, you're just grilled the whole time, right? And uh, anybody take a lit class? Did the teacher say, and now we're going to read the book? <laughs> All right? You had outside work to do. So it's not something that we should be freaking out about. It's something we've been doing for years and years. It's just putting technology in an equation tends 
to freak people out. Okay? And it also makes people think, well, if the computer's doing it, what about my job security? Okay? But according to this report, professional educators are needed more than ever. Okay? Uh, because you have to curate this. Okay? Because your students are doing things uh, at home, and a lot of times you've got to come in and give maybe a 15 minute lecture of something you need to think about. You just have to be that willing to do it. And it's pretty cool, you know, I come into my classroom dragging a 50 inch LCD TV, got my Apple TV, and I've got an iPad and an extra iPad just in case. Uh, and so there's usually never a problem, and the students really like that. Uh, I open it up and I say, oh, you got an iPad. You find something and, and put it on the screen. I'm not password protected. Uh, and the students really feel like they're um, being a part of it, okay? Uh, the pros and the cons, okay? More one-on-one -on -one time with me, okay? Students learn at their own pace. Okay, I don't have a very good attention span. Oh, there's a talk, right? So I can chunk it out in the way that I want to. It encourages mastery learning. Okay, I'm gonna show you uh, something that I do, and I don't really care with some of my assignments if it takes them four hours to do it. Just as long as they do it, they get 100. Okay, I'm not gonna do that with everything. That would, I think I'd have some problems with my admins. Uh, but mastery learning is what I'm trying to do. And then the leveling of the playing fields, okay? Because not all of us grew up with a spoon, a silver spoon in our mouth, and we really need to be considered of those people who, you know, don't have the advantages that I might have had or you might have had, okay? Um, kids don't come to class. Did I miss anything? Oh gosh, 10 minutes, okay? Did I miss anything? Well, of course you missed something, but having blended learning, having a hybrid course, everything is there for them to go back and review. Diagnostics is great, and then it actually makes for teachers to be able to teach, or students to teach students, okay? Cons, do students really need more screen time? Okay, this is, this is not Facebook. They're actually learning. And believe me, if you can make it where they think they're learning and it's fun for them, they're gonna want to do more. Do they need more homework? Well, it's not for homework. I leverage that with the other homework that I'm giving. Uh, there's also this idea of the digital divide, those that have and the have-nots. But I teach at a community college and most of my students are coming to us and they don't have computers at home, but they've got a nicer cell phone than I do. Most of them. So this whole notion of technology, we've got more computers on our campus than could possibly ever even be used. They're not the best, but I haven't seen that, okay? Uh, and then the last thing, who's getting rich? So if you're using YouTube videos, which we're gonna talk about here in a second, uh, you know, people complain that why are we showing ads in our classroom, okay? Because you can get around that by doing your own, okay? What I do, okay? I'll have some sort of video, I'll have something, for example, they might uh, watch a couple videos about uh, Madonna the Meadows. You know, it's Raphael's work. Can anyone tell me the implied shape that you see? A triangle, okay? So when we come back into class, I try to make it relevant for them. Does anyone see the implied shape? The arrow. The arrow. Oops. Do you see the arrow now? It's hard to see. Uh, anyhow, we try to do things that uh, relate to them in their own environment. And they bring things in uh, that they see, okay? Uh, we have uh, one section where we talk about Thanatos paintings and we meditate on death. If you're not an artist, you don't need to be doing that. Uh, you, that's what we do. Uh, and so uh, we study one Thanatos painting thoroughly at home, and then when they come into class, we break up and we talk about, uh, for example, um, ladies, it doesn't matter how much lipstick you put on, you're never going to look like your senior portrait. Okay, stuff like that, and it's just funny the things that they come up with because they already have uh, a basis to start the conversation, okay? Um, it's hands-on connections. I want to make memories, okay? I don't want people making grades. I want them to think back and say, that was the funnest class I've ever been in, okay? Why can't I take you again? Uh, we do have hands-on projects. I do color wheels, group projects. Uh, they get together, they do color schemes. I'm like, you, uh, you're achromatic. You guys are whatever, they choose. Okay? We talk about perspective, they actually do a perspective, blind contours, printmaking, um, sometimes we do yoga in my humanities classes, and then uh, we also do canal form. So I give them a, a piece of clay and they actually do, do canal form, just like back in the day. Okay? Now the technology. Okay, I'm gonna go through this really quickly because I got like five minutes. Uh, I use McGraw Hill's smart book, okay? And I did some screenshots because uh, this is the completion that I'm talking about. I set um, 
goals that I want my students to accomplish, and an individualized learning path for every single student. So uh, as Celine, it might take her five minutes to do it, and I'm kind of a, a dunce, and it might take me 50, but it doesn't matter, we're all uh, going through uh, the same sequence, and once we get it, we get it, and it's not gonna ask us about it again, okay? Um, any of you guys ever have uh, a used textbook and it's highlighted, okay? The thing that I like about my smart book, and I'm not trying to plug McGraw Hill, the thing that I like about my smart book is that it is highlighted, and uh, I know all those highlights are correct, because I'm the one that made the highlights, okay? I told it that it's there. So with the preview, they see the chapter, and then there's highlights, and those are student learning outcomes that I've decided as an instructor. They're in yellow. Uh, you see the green. Once they, as a student, understand that, it turns green. So they can go back, and it tells them, you know, they only have to read five paragraphs instead of 15 or 20 pages. There's a practice. And uh, these are pros, and the cool thing about it, they're competing with other students in the class, because if you say you know the answer, you get the answer right, you get 70 points, and so, you know, they're competing, but it's like whose line is in any way that points don't mean anything, okay? Uh, so, uh, you can see the artwork, and again, uh, it will tell you, you can go to the textbook, it'll, um, if you misspell a word, say like golden, because some of us do, it will count right and it'll say it's just misspelled. Okay, which is pretty interesting. Um, it'll tell you you got 100%, and there's a coach down at the bottom always in case you need to like somebody that coached you through it. Uh, and then two, it'll give you your learning progress. So it'll say if you take the test within uh, 12 days, everything you know, you're gonna remember, which is really awesome. And then for those overachievers, they're like, can I have another quiz? Uh, <laughs> they can make their own quizzes based on learning objectives that they think they don't know, okay? Um, and so you see, I went through about 100% and everything that was yellow has now turned to green, okay? So I do have a reading quiz that's just a standard quiz. They might have one or two times to do it. And then I have this learn smart module, which is completion. So hopefully if you made a 70 on the quiz and you made a 100 on your learn smart, after all is said and done, it kind of equals out. Uh, another thing that I found out about last night, thanks to some friends from Washington, is uh, ThingLink, okay? And I'm gonna go to my course, so you can see how it actually works. And I really hope I haven't been logged out, okay? And I just did this, I, I started this at 11.30 last night. Was that the five minute? Oh gosh. <clears throat> so, what, with ThingLink, what you're able to do, as uh, an instructor, I can choose an image. And I've chosen Raphael School of Athens, okay? Because how I used to do it, let me go and show you my modules is it is very, very linear, and the students are like, oh, this is so boring. You know, it's, you want to be as interactive as possible. Let me, let me go to this next one, because it's a, it's a little bit easier to see, probably. Maybe not. Okay. So anyhow, what I'm able to do is, as students are scrolling over, I put these in here. So any of the links I used to have before in separate pages, I'm able to tell them exactly what I want to do. So if they want to watch a video, they can go and click on the Smart History video. If they want to watch how a fresco is made, they can click on that. And I can put it anywhere I want, okay? I almost put one right there. I could find a video about restoration, but I was going to call it the dirty parts. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, that's what that is if you're wondering what that square is. Uh, they always leave a dirty part on any fresco. Um, you can go into the museum and see it. Um, I did want to kind of show you how that works, okay? Um, this is ThingLink, you go to thin, uh, ThingLink.com, and uh, I'm sorry, it's cutting off some of the things, but just, you go to it, you try it, it's the most amazing thing that I've ever seen. I got as excited about ThingLink as I did about Canvas when I first saw it. That's just how awesome it is. Um, because you don't have a lot of page after page after page after page. And I'm sorry, it, I can't show you everything because I can't see everything on the screen, um, and I apologize. But um, you won't regret it. It's totally awesome. And the cool thing about it is, is um, after you save everything, you can save it out as an iframe, and it'll just print you out the code. You go into your editor, you copy and paste, you hit save, boom, that's all you do. And if you go into ThingLink and you change it, it changes globally so you don't have to worry about going back into that course and fixing it. If you, if you oh, I messed up the video. Do I have to go back into four courses and fix it? No, I fix it one time. 
which is amazing. Uh, what else? I'm so sorry. I got so nervous with the, how everything was doing. Um, lecture capture. There's free, so there's free software. Uh, screeners are pretty good. Uh, one, it's free if you only want five minutes or so. Jane's pretty good. Uh, if you really want to pay for something, Camtasia Studio, the fact that I use Cabral Hill Connect, I've got Tegrity for free. And what Tegrity does, it records everything that I present. Uh, I, don't, I don't record my lecture as I'm giving it. I always do it while I'm by myself because I don't want you know, the students saying something inappropriate. Okay? Uh, <laughs> and it happens, all right? Uh, so I, I tend to use Tegrity. There's a lot of things out there. There are things that are free. Of course, we all know YouTube. Uh, Films on Demand, our school already pays for it, so I have access to that. And uh, the cool thing about Films on Demand, I also have access to the transcripts. So I, I'll go ahead and I'll put the transcripts in for people who want to follow along. Um, just to show you about the results, this was in a high school, so it's a little bit different. This is from Newton.com. Uh, Look at the freshman who failed English. 50% failed. After the flipped classroom was instated, 19%. 44 failed, failed math. After the flipped classroom, 13%. Discipline cases. I don't have a lot of discipline cases in my class. I throw them out of the class. 736 pre, 249 post. Okay? Any questions? I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, there is my email address. Did everyone get a sticker? Yes. yes. Um, how, what do you do in your class in order to level the playing field when you have those who do not have the essential prerequisite and at the same time you have those who are ready to go? Um, yeah, can, you're saying how to handle the people who don't keep up? Right, so because in the classroom you might have yeah, those who do not have prior skills and knowledge to learn the content. Well, what, what I do is I selectively, um, I set the groups. So, uh, you know, I put, you know, the person that needs a little bit of help with someone that I don't think needs a lot of help. And, um, you know, people get embarrassed. It happens one or two times, but after that, they either drop the course, they get the program. So will, will all your students go through the same learning activity? I mean, I try to vary it. I mean, sometimes it's discussion, sometimes they make a PowerPoint, sometimes they make a presentation. So it, it's varied. I try to focus on everything. All right. Thank you, guys.